The movie Concussion, based on a true story, was released in 2015 and was eye-opening to many viewers. For those who haven't seen the film, Will Smith stars as Dr. Bennett Omalu, a forensic pathologist who was the first to discover CTE. CTE is a neurodegenerative disease found in people with a history of repeated brain trauma. While conducting autopsies, Dr. Omalu closely examined the brains of past football players who were dying at early ages and of unknown causes. In these examinations, he found evidence of neurotrauma, concluding that the players died due to long-term effects of repeated blows to the head. In 2005, Dr. Omalu published his findings about CTE. To say he received backlash from the NFL would be an understatement. He was barred from the NFL, many people refused to listen to him, and still today, many individuals do not acknowledge this life-threatening disease. In 2017, JAMA published results from autopsies of the brains of 202 American football players. Of the 111 participants who had played in the NFL, 110 were diagnosed with CTE. This 99% figure received major media coverage when the study was published. Hall of Fame quarterback Joe Namath speaking only to WPTV about a report this week in the New York Times about brain injuries and football players. There are new concerns about football injuries after another tough hit in the NFL overnight. Several former NFL stars who suffered from the disease took their own lives as well. Doctors tested the brains of more than 100 dead NFL players. All but one came back with CTE. Since the first publication of CTE was in 2005, the research field could be considered underdeveloped and speculative. There are multiple proposed mechanisms by which CTE may arise in an individual who has experienced head trauma. It is complex, not fully understood, and likely involves multiple pathways interacting with one another. Among the proposed mechanisms in recent publications, there exist common playmakers and processes going on that may help to answer that question of what is going on inside my head. Let's learn more about the playmakers. Your brain is made up of billions of neurons that are responsible for processing and transmitting information. Because they have such vital responsibilities, there are some key players that protect neurons. One of these protectors is tau. Tau is a protein that stabilizes the microtubules of a neuron. This is important because microtubules form a framework for cells and are essential for many vital functions. Neurons are very different from other cells in your body because they don't regenerate as well as the rest of our cells do. And there's a reason for that. See, neurons help play a key role in memory, movement, and just about anything you can think of. So it'd be risky to regenerate neuronal cells. As you might imagine, having brain cells that make random new connections could be detrimental. We have stop mechanisms that are built into our bodies that prevent neurons from repairing themselves. Glycogen synthase kinase 3, or GSK3, is a key player that prevents neuron regeneration and therefore contributes to neuron death. GSK3 is a key regulator in many signaling pathways throughout the body. Because it is involved in so many different pathways, it is a target for many diseases such as Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, and CTE. When a head collision occurs, the brain hits the skull and this causes a chemical imbalance involving GSK3. That tau that's so great at protecting our neurons falls off the microtubules. All of this tau then clumps together, disrupting the communication of its original neuron and also causing the death of other neurons. This process can continue on even after the head injury has occurred. This is not the end of the story though. If it were, then every time you got hit in the head, all of your neurons would die, and that's not right. 
See, we have mechanisms in place to save our neurons from dying. Cue playmaker number four. Receptor tyrosine kinase, or RTK. RTK is smart. When a brain injury occurs, it knows that GSK3 is going to make tau fall off of the microtubules. So, RTK stops, or in other words, inhibits, GSK3. Therefore, more tau stays put and more neurons are protected. However, there's only so much RTK can do. Repeated mild blows to the head, or even just one moderate to severe head injury, can cause a cascade of events that can eventually become life-threatening. Our bodies hold some of the most remarkable recovery mechanisms. Lots of emerging treatments focus on just building upon our body's already great protective mechanisms. Some treatment options for CTE are being proposed. In 2019, a study was published that proposed lithium as treatment for CTE. Why? Lithium works in a similar way to RTK because it inhibits GSK3, therefore protecting our neurons. Your brain is amazing, complex, and unique. It's so complex that it can rarely renew nor repair its parts once damage has been done. So make sure you take care of it. Some of the top misconceptions about a concussions are, if you don't lose consciousness, you can get back in the game. If you don't lose consciousness, you can go back to the job site. If you get hit again with the same or even less of a pressure, your mind may take it even worse. The brain is primed to react more violently to that second hit. I think you need to understand that and make sure that you're out of that activity. Understand that doctors and healthcare workers are not trying to hurt you and they're definitely going to keep you out of harm's way. But they want to make sure that you are as stable and as healthy as possible to live a long and productive life.